Um, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa salam, wa So tonight, inshallah, we're going to just touch on um, the topic of repentance. Uh, before we pass over to uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman to share with us some recitation in the different qiraat, inshallah. Um, but before that, of course, tonight is um, one of the odd nights. We're in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Uh, these are nights of Tawbah, these are nights of repentance. And uh, mashallah, you know, it's beautiful to see the masjid full. It's beautiful to see so many of you coming for taraweeh, so many of you coming for qiyam. And, you know, having these communal acts of, of worship, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing. But of course, Ramadan is also uh, a time where we need to individually connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And have those moments where it's just us and Allah. This is very important. Because what can often happen is um, we just get caught up in the, the, the buzz of, of mashallah these nights and yes we'll pray our qiyam and whatnot but maybe we won't connect with Allah as we should and we don't have those individual moments with Allah. So these are, these are nights for um, spending time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the key things that we do in these nights is what is to seek forgiveness. Yes, these are nights of tawbah. Ramadan is a month of tawbah. Ramadan is a month in which we come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which we try to rectify our relationship with Allah. We recognize the mistakes that we've made and we try to better ourselves. And this act of tawbah, this act of istighfar of course is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many times in the Quran. We're actually commanded to seek forgiveness. Istawfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghaffara. That seek the forgiveness of your Lord. Why? Because your Lord forgives. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa tubu ila Allahi jami'an. That all of you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the repentance of those who repent to him. And that's ultimately your success, is that when you repent to Allah, you turn back to Allah, you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, it's in that that your success is found. And the reality is, is that look, we all make mistakes. There's nobody sitting in this room right now that's free of mistakes. Every single one of us is someone who's fallen into mistake. We've made mistakes, we've committed sins. There's nobody free from that. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? He said, every son of Adam, every son of Adam, no exceptions, is someone who falls into sin, makes mistakes. But the best of those who make mistakes are, are who? Are the one that recognizes the mistakes being made, the one that recognizes the fallen into sin and then seeks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see. On these nights especially, is that we recognize our mistakes and then we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know the reality is that if we want our our books, uh, our book of sins, if we want that cleaned, if we want that wiped out, then we have to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. <laughs> Yes, and really seek forgiveness. You know, when we talk about seeking forgiveness, I always share the story of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimullah, when he was doing tawaf and he saw the person seeking forgiveness. And what did he say to him? You know, he was seeking forgiveness like we seek forgiveness today. Yeah, what do we say? Allah maghfirli, oh Allah forgive me. And you don't even think about the sin that you've committed. It's just something that we say. After salah, what do we say? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Yeah, you're not really seeking forgiveness. You're just saying astaghfirullah because that's a habit and you know, you, you just say it. And Imam Abu Nifa sees this person seeking forgiveness in that manner. And then what did he say to him? He said, Ya akhi, hadha al-istighfaru yahtaju li al-istighfar. He said, oh my brother, this istighfar that you're doing, yes, the way you're seeking forgiveness from Allah requires you to seek forgiveness. I.e. seek forgiveness for the way you're seeking forgiveness. It's not befitting you speak to Allah like this. And is this the way you speak to your Lord? Is this the way you seek forgiveness? No. And he put your heart out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cry in front of Allah. They would say about Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimullah, Kana idha baka fakanna nara lam tukhlaq illa lahu. They said that when he would cry, it was as if the fire was not created except for him. That's one of the, the categories of those who will be under Allah's shade on the Day of Judgment is who? Rajulun dhakar Allah khaliyan fafadat ayna. The one who remembers Allah when he's by himself. Yes, and he's overcome with love of, of, of Allah, fear of Allah. And he begins to cry in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognizing his weakness, recognizing his mistakes, recognizing that he needs to make uh, a change. So, my dear brothers and sisters, um, these are, as I said, nights in which we, we come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we reflect on our relationship with Allah. We reflect on where we are with Allah. Where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my life? Where have I put Allah in my list of priorities, so to speak? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, am I constantly thinking about Allah? Am I conscious of Allah? Am I living a life which is pleasing to Allah? Yes, what kind of life am I living? 
Yes, or am I somebody who's neglectful of Allah, neglectful of the boundaries of Allah, just living how I want to live? I may do a little salah here and there, I might, you know, a bit, a bit practicing here and there, but I'm pretty much doing what I want to do. That's not the, the, the way of the Muslim. The Muslim, as we said many times before, is what? Is the one who submits to Allah. The Muslim is the one who does Islam. He does submission. Meaning what? That he puts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before his own desires. Yes, he submits to Allah. He lives by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law. That's the Muslim. And he recognizes, as I said, that he's made mistakes. And he thinks about Allah. You know, and I mentioned this before, this idea of when it comes to sins, we often categorize sins by minor and major. Yeah, and we say, you know, the minor sins, don't worry about it. How many times have you heard somebody say, Kuch nahi onda, eh, chota, it's just a little thing, yaar, don't worry. It's not a big thing. Allah is ghafoor, Allah is rahim, Allah forgives. Yeah, it's true, Allah forgives, but don't play games with Allah. Yes, as the, one of the Salafi said, لا تنظري للحجم المعصية ولكن تنظري العائذة من من أسيت Don't look at the size of the sin. Look at the greatness of the one who you've disobeyed. Don't think that it's a little sin. Look at it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you've disobeyed. You, you, you walk on His earth, you breathe His air, you eat from His provisions. And then you think, oh, it's just a little thing. No. Realize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are things that we must think about and realize that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves the slave that recognizes his sin and then repents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this. Allah doesn't love the sinner. Yes, because there's a difference. You might commit a sin and you don't even do tawbah for it, you don't do istighfar for it, you think there's nothing and it's just a minor little thing. You, Allah doesn't love that person. Allah loves who? Inna Allah yuhibbul tawabin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the one who repents, i.e. he commits the sin like you and I, but he recognizes he's done wrong and then he seeks forgiveness for it. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. You, Allah loves that, that you show your weakness in front of him and you show that I've committed sin, I've fallen, but Ya Allah, I recognize that you are the one who's deserving of my worship. I recognize that you're the one who forgives all sins and you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see from you and I. And the Prophet taught us this. You know, if there was anybody who didn't need to seek forgiveness, who was it? It was the Prophet Ma'soom, free from sin, the Nabi But what did he say? He said, Wallahi, inni la astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi fil yom akthara min sab'een marra. He said, I swear by Allah, I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to him how many times a day? Seventy times a day. Now I ask myself and, I, and I, I put this to you guys as well to ask yourself the question, how many times do we repent in a day? How many times do we seek forgiveness? The Prophet didn't need to seek forgiveness. He had no sins. He was masoom. But he was, of course, mistakes and mishaps. But he, he وسلم, would seek forgiveness 70, more than 70 times a day. To show what? You and I. That this is what we need to do. When we slip, when we make mistakes, we go back to Allah and we seek His forgiveness. And this was of course the way of all of the Anbiya. Adam salam, what differentiated Adam salam from Shaitan? Adam salam recognized his sin. What did he say? Rabbana, our Lord, that we the lamna and fusana, we've wronged ourselves. We've wronged ourselves. That if you don't show mercy upon us and you don't forgive us, then we are truly from those who are lost. We've lost out. Why? Because and if Allah doesn't forgive you, then realize there's only one place that we're going. If you don't attain the forgiveness of Allah and you don't go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek His forgiveness, yes, like the Anbiya, like Adam alayhi salam, like Yunus alayhi salam. Yunus alayhi salam, what was his mistake? Yeah, he left his people after giving da'wah to them and them re refusing, he left his people. That was the mistake that he made. And what does he say? As soon as he realized his mistake, what, what, what was his du'a? What's the du'a of Yunus alayhi salam? La ilaha illa subhanak. Inni kuntu min al That I am from the wrongdoers. I've made the mistake. He recognized the mistake and then what? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And when you seek Allah's forgiveness, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for you to come and seek his forgiveness. MashaAllah, this has turned into like a... And he lights her off and, and what's going on here? And people are going to fall asleep in a minute. Who's turning all these lights off? <laughs> MashaAllah. Um, and, and I'll end on this, inshallah, before I pass it over to the Shaykh. Is that we must realize um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he forgives all sins. Yeah, as he mentions in Surah An-Nisa, that Allah does not forgive shirk, but he forgives everything else. 
Yes, Allah does not forgive shirk, but He forgets, forgives everything else. If you die associating partners with Allah, there's no forgiveness for you. But if you die and you've committed other sins, but you seek Allah's forgiveness and realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. You have a Lord that loves to forgive. You know, in one hadith when the Prophet والسلام, he described Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And what did he say? He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hundred mercies. Okay, and he sent one mercy down to earth. And through that one mercy, what do you have? You have the love that uh, a, ch a parent shows towards a child. You have the mercy that um, is shown between animals and jinn and mankind. And all of these, uh, all of the mercy that you see on earth is just that one mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down on earth. And what does the Prophet say? That he's retained 99 mercies. 99 mercies to deal with the slaves on the day of judgment. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the rahmah of Allah that we're talking about. You know, there's an ayah in the Quran, and I've shared this many times before, a few years ago, um, during itikaf actually. There was a brother who was doing itikaf with us many years ago. And uh, he came to me one night and he said, you know, um, I've done so much wrong in my life. Okay, I've committed so many sins, I've done so much wrong. He said, I don't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me. Yeah, I don't think Allah will forgive me. And I remind, it reminded me of the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say in Surah Al-Zumur? قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Subhanallah, this is ayatul amal. This is, uh, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing you and I. And listen very carefully, what does he say? He says, say, my slave who has transgressed, who has committed sin, you and I, each one of us, he didn't say my slave who's an angel. He said, my slave who's committed sin, who's transgressed, La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Don't despair from the mercy of Allah. No matter what it is you've done, don't despair from Allah's mercy. Why? Because Allah forgives all sins. You just have to be the one who takes that step to Allah. When you take that step to Allah, and you acknowledge your mistakes and your sins, and you seek Allah's forgiveness, then realize Allah will forgive you. Yes, realize Allah will forgive you. But you have to be the one who takes that step, who recognizes the wrong that we've done, and then seeks that forgiveness. Allah forgives all sins. Don't despair. The ulama, what do they say? They say it's haram to despair from the mercy of Allah. For you to think that Allah won't forgive you, this is haram. How, who are we to put a limit on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? So always take that step and seek that forgiveness. And I'll end on two quick stories. I think the title they gave was stories of forgiveness. And you're probably thinking, where are the stories? <laughs> So the first story is a story you've all heard, I'm sure. The hadith narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, where the Prophet Ali he described that from the nations before you there was a man who committed how many murders? 99 murders. Okay, so this man he committed 99 murders. And then he approached, he asked for the most knowledgeable person to go to, he was sent to a monk. And he asked this monk, he said, Is there any forgiveness for me? I've committed 99 murders. And the monk said, you've got no chance. Okay, 99 murders, what do you think this is? He said, no chance. So what does the guy do? He kills him as well. He says, khalas, make it 100. Okay, 99, 100, what's the difference? And then, of course, he feels remorse. And then he asks, who is the most knowledgeable person? This time he's sent to a scholar. And he asks the, the scholar the same question. Yes, I've committed this time 100 murders. Is there any forgiveness for me? And what does the scholar say to him? He says, what stands between you and Allah? Nothing stands between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Take that step. Yes. Seek the forgiveness from Allah. And what does he say to him? He says, go to such and such a land. I leave the land that you're in, a land of evil, a land of corruption. Go to such and such a land. Why? Because there, there are people who worship Allah. And this is a side point. This teaches us what? That the environment you're in has an impact on your actions. If you're surrounding yourself with evil, with fahisha, with um, sin, then that's going to impact on you. But when you take yourself out of that environment and go to a more purer environment, then that impacts on you. So he was told to go to a land where there are people who worship Allah. So he decides to take this journey. And as he's on his journey, the angel of death comes. And he dies whilst he's on the journey. Now what happens next? The two angels descend. You have the angel of Rahmah and you have the angel of Adab, of punishment. And they dispute who's going to take his soul. The angel of Rahmah says that he was on his way, he had a repentant heart. He was seeking Allah's forgiveness. The angel of Adab said that this, had, this person had no goodness in him. He committed a hundred murders. And what happens next? A third angel comes in the form of a man. And they agree that he will decide. So this one, this third angel, 
he says measure the distance between the lands and we'll see which land is he closer to so they measured the distance and he was closer to which land the land that he was intending to go to the land of khair the land of toba the land of istighfar and because of that he was forgiven in one narration it mentions that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he decreased um, the distance uh, that he was from the land that he was going from and made the land that he was going to closer why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to forgive. Meaning what? That this person had that intention. He had that remorse. He was going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala met him with forgiveness. Meaning what? That look, none of us here, inshallah, I hope, have committed 100 murders. Yeah, there's nobody here who's committed 100 murders. Okay? So don't think that you've got no chance. But you have to follow in the footsteps of this individual who was truly repentant and truly wanted that forgiveness. The last story I'll finish on before passing over to the Shaykh is the story of Malik ibn Dinar. The story of Malik ibn Dinar is a famous story. There's different riwayat and different narrations and um, Ibn Qudama mentions it in his book Tawwabin, those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And cutting a long story short, Malik ibn Dinar, they said about him, at the beginning of his life, he was somebody who was involved in alcohol, sin. He was distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, you know, he was somebody who was addicted to, to drinking alcohol. And um, you know, he had a daughter, and some narrations mention the daughter's name was Fatima, who he loved dearly. And one day when he's drinking his alcohol, the daughter throws the, the bottle out of his hand and it spills. Um, and, you know, he was started to reflect that I need to change my ways, etc. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that his daughter was taken, and his daughter died. Young daughter who he loved dearly. Um, so he is now falls back into alcohol and, you know, falls back into sin. And one night he sees a dream. And in that dream is the Day of Judgment. And there's chaos on the Day of Judgment. And people are running everywhere. And when he looks behind him, he sees a snake coming towards him. Yes, yeah, some rewired mentioned dragon, etc. But something's running towards him that's scary. And it causes him great concern. So he starts to run away. And as he's running away, he comes across an old man. An old man that was weak. An old man that was frail. But had a beautiful scent. Yeah, it looked beautiful, clean, white clothing, uh, beautiful smelling man. So he went to that man and said, save me from this snake. And the man said, I'm too weak, I can't do anything for you. So he carries on running and then he comes to a mountain and when he looks over the mountain, it's a hellfire. And a, he hears a call that this isn't for you, turn back. So he carries on running. And then he comes to the man again and he asks that man again, that save me, yeah, save me. And the man says, I'm too weak, I can't do anything for you. And then he runs to another mountain and there's children playing there. And he goes closer to the children. And one of the children is who? It's his daughter Fatima. So he goes running to Fatima and Fatima embraces him. And Fatima pushes away the dragon yeah, or the snake. And then Fatima recites an ayah. What's the ayah? In Surah Al-Hadid. That has the time not come for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he, has the time not come, so the, the, the daughter is reciting this verse Has the time not come for those who, who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect themselves with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And then he asked the daughter, that, what is all this that I've seen? She says, this is the day of judgment That old man that was frail, that was weak, that was so beautiful That old man was your good deeds Your good deeds were so few that the good deeds couldn't benefit you this day The day of judgment, your good deeds are so few they're beautiful, but there's so few that they couldn't benefit you. And what was that snake representing that was running behind me? That snake was my evil deeds. The evil deeds almost consumed me. They almost consumed you, the daughter's saying. And then the, the verse is recited. He wakes up. As soon as he wakes up, he rushes. He performs wudu and rushes to the masjid. When he arrives at the masjid, which ayah is the imam reciting? The exact same ayah. From that day forward, they say, Malik ibn Dinar changed his life around. Malik ibn Dinar went on to become one of the great saints, one of the great awliya of Allah, one of the great worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From somebody who was consuming alcohol, who was fall, falling into all types of sin, he changes his life around and comes somebody who was from the closest of Allah that we're talking about today, centuries later. This shows you what, my dear brothers and sisters, that change can come. Never think that it's, you, you've done too much. Just have that intention, have that desire to seek Allah's forgiveness. Take that step to Allah and you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most forgiving, the most merciful. And of course, as I said, these are the nights, my dear brothers and sisters, of coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm asking Allah 
in these last few nights of Ramadan, pouring your heart out, having those moments by yourself. Honestly, tonight, tomorrow night, Sunday night, make sure you have some of the night where it's just you and Allah. Yeah, okay, nice, we'll have Qiyam together, we'll do Dua together, etc. But make sure you're spending some time when it's just you and Allah. When you put your head in, in, in sujood, and you ask Allah for His forgiveness. You ask Allah, you tell Allah that, Allah, I want to come closer to you. Ya Allah, I want your guidance. Ya Allah, bring me closer to your path. I want to live a life in submission to you that you're pleased with. Take that step, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And wallahi, you'll find that Allah will, will open doors for you that you never imagined could exist. But you have to take that step, my dear brothers and sisters. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us tawfiq in these nights, uh, the remaining nights of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives our sins. He makes us from those who return to Him pure and clean from the mistakes that we make in this dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepts our fasting, He accepts our salah, our siyam, everything that we've done in this month and He overlooks the sins that we've committed in this month. I'm going to ask Shaykh Abdul Rahman now to introduce the topic of Qiraat. And uh, mashallah, many of you know Shaykh Abdul Rahman of course is uh, an expert in Quran uh, in that he's mashallah got ijazah in the different modes of recitation. And uh, I'll ask the Shaykh to go into it and to explain it and then to give us a, um, mashallah, and to give us some recitation in the different modes. Uh, so I'll pass it over to the Shaykh to explain more, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ba'd. First, uh, I want to say I'm honored to be one of your part and one of your family. Wallahi, I said that before and I'll stay, I'll stay, uh, say that. Uh, this is gift from Allah, Wallahi, to be with you this year. Uh, I'm very proud of that, I'm very happy. Um, this community is, is amazing, Wallahi. Very beautiful. Wallahi, I feel there is lights from your faces. Noor min wujuhikum. And I hope, I hope this is a sign from Allah Azza wa Jal uh, that uh, He accept our deeds and, and, and give us the forgiveness and uh, mercy from Him. Allahumma ameen. And uh, I'm very happy because a lot of you uh, told me that last year uh, you recited with the Tim Qira'at in Surah Al-Fatiha. Last year you prayed, I prayed here last year one night. I recited here uh, after the one time. And a lot of you remember that this is placing a paraka from Allah Azza wa Jal to remember uh, one time from one year or two years, uh, 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 a couple minutes. Um, <laughs> number two, Al-Qira'at, as you know, the different styles for Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem. All of Al-Qira'at, the term Qira'at is correct. All of it revealed from Allah Azza wa Jal upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a different styles, uh, different changing little bit, and all is correct. Okay, so if you, if you, uh, uh, hear any changing from any one recite with different qira'a or different style, it's correct. And it's a fard kifaya, fard kifaya ala al-Muslimin. That means it's a fard, but if some of you learn it, it's enough. It's from Allah Azza wa Jal, like, like here in Chidil, if there are some shuyuh, know the ten qira'at is enough. But if no one in the whole of UK learn Qiraat, all of us, uh, all of us will be in uh, sense. Okay, so it's a fardi kifaya. Some of us learn Qiraat, it's enough. But at least you have to know, take idea about Qiraat. You have to hear about it. You have to know what is the meaning of Qiraat or uh, uh, listen to it a little bit. Okay, so now I recite some ayat with all qiraat in the same ayat. So you will, you will listen to some differences, some ikhtilafat. Uh, uh, so it is, will be uh, easy to, to understand it when you, when, you, when you listen to any other one. This is qiraat and this is correct. Even if I don't know it, it's correct and it's a fardi kifaya. There is someone else know it. Okay? So I hope everyone at least read about it, uh, uh, listen to, to it, uh, 
because because you may all of your life don't know anything just the short surahs it's okay it's a barakah from Allah Azza wa Jal to give you anything from this blessing book from the Quran al Kareem. But you have to know and take idea about it, okay? Inshallah, to, uh, I don't need to take a uh, long time from you. I'll start, inshallah, now to recite uh, some ayat, beautiful ayat from Surah Al An'am with the old Qiraat, the 10 Qiraat. <coughs> and the names of Qiraat quickly. Al Qura Al Ashr, the 10, rec 10 reciters. Nafa' Ibn Kathir. Abu Amr, Ibn Amr, Asim, Hamza, Al-Kisai, Abu Ga'far, Ya'qub, Khalaf Al-Ashr. And the country, Nafi' Al-Madani, from Al-Madina, Ibn Kathir Al-Makki, from Mecca, Ibn Amr Al-Shah, Abu Amr Al-Basri, from Al-Basra, Ibn Amr Al-Shami, from Al-Sham, Asim, Hamza, Al-Kisai, and Khalaf Al-Ashr, Al-Kufiyun, from Al-Kufa, Abu Ga'far al-Madani and Ya'qub al-Hadrami from al-Basra as well. Uh, one of them only from Egypt, Warsha al nafa So we, we were uh, reciting Warsh more than five years, 500 years ago. And uh, the Hafsa uh, al-Asim is al-Kufa in al-Iraq. Recitation, it's uh, the most recitation we're reciting all over the world. And uh, some countries recite Warsh now, still recite Warsh like uh, Al Maghrib Al Arabi, Morocco, uh, Tunis, Al Jazair, Algeria, and uh, the rest reciting Hafs. It's okay. This question is that allowed to recite with any different Qira'a? Yeah. All is Quran, all is correct, all is Kalamullah. But you have to know what is the rules of this recitation to read it correctly. Don't mix. Because if you mix this qira'a with that qira'a, you will make, you will make uh, uh, mistakes. Okay? <clears throat> so if you know the, the, the rules of this qira'a, you can recite it. If you don't know, recite the normal one, Hafs. If you don't know the rules of Hafs, try to read as much as you can, no problem. Even if you do mistakes, because you can't read correctly, Allah Azza wa Jalla will give you two rewards. Ajran. وَمَنْ يَتَتَعْتَعْ فِيهِ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ شَاقْ لَهُ أَجْرَانِ Whoever recite it and find it it's very difficult, Allah Azza wa Jalla will give him two rewards. Ajran. First one for the recitation, because he is reciting. The second one for uh, difficulty, because it's difficult. And whoever reciting professionally, Allah Azza wa Jalla will give him a high place with the uh, angles. Al Mahir bil Quran ma al Safara, al Kiram al Barara. May Allah make us uh, uh, among them. Allahumma amin. A'udhu billahi min al Shaytan al Rajim. Bismillah al Rahman al Rahim. Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha falahu ashru amthaliha Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha Man jaa bil سَنَتِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا مَنْ جِئَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَلَا يُجْزَى إِلَّا مِثْلَهَا وَمَنْ سيئة فلا يجزى إلا مثلها وهم لا يظلمون وهم لا يظلمون ومن جاء بالسيئة فلا يجزى إلا مثلها وهم لا يظلمون وهم 
المسلمين قل أغير الله أبغي ربا وهو رب كل شيء وهو رب كل شيء وهو رب كل شيء قل أغير الله قل أغير الله أبغي ربا وهو رب كل شيء قل غير الله قل غير الله أبغي ربا وهو رب كل شيء قل أغير الله أبغي ربا وهو رب كل شيء قل أغير الله أبغي ربا وهو رب كل شيء ولا تكسب كل نفس إلا عليها ولا تكسب كل نفس إلا عليها ولا تكسب كل نفس إلا عليها ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وزر أخرى ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى ثم إلى ربكم مرجعكم فينبئكم بما كنتم فيه تختلفون ثم إلى ربكم مرجعكم فينبئكم بما كنتم فيه تختلفون فينبئكم بما كنتم فيه تختلفون وهو الذي جعلكم خلائف الأرض ورفع بعضكم فوق بعض درجات ليبلوكم ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم فيما آتاكم وهو الذي جعلكم خلائف الأرض ورفع بعضكم فوق بعض درجات وهو الذي جعلكم خلائف الأرض ورفع فوق بعض درجات درجات ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم وهو الذي جعلكم خلائف الأرض ورفع بعضكم فوق بعض درجات ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم إن ربك سريع العقاب إن ربك سريع العقاب وإن صدق الله العظيم